Controversy over whether or not sports nutrition products and ingredients really work is not something we're strangers to. A lot of bad data has plagued our industry, especially in the muscle building sector, for some time. But today I've got new data to present to you on DL185 Dilucine from NNB, a muscle builder that we've praised large companies for launching, but we also haven't really gotten to talk about human data yet. Last year, some was presented at ISSN, and now it's been fully published in the prestigious PLOS One. And we can finally talk about new human data that not only compares dilucine against a placebo, but also against traditional L-leucine, which most people are familiar with. Now, dilucine is supposed to be 185% better absorbed than typical leucine. We've seen rat data that presents this, but this is the first time we're talking about real human training data. In fact, this whole group of participants were trained individuals, young, fit, and they were put through a pretty rigorous training system. We like to see these types of studies where not only are they placebo controlled and randomized, but they also have great participants that really know what they're doing in terms of fitness. We saw significantly increased strength gains in the leg press, significantly increased repetitions to failure in the leg press, and overall increased strength, meaning total, not just leg press, but also bench press as well. Now, this is significant because we saw a significant improvement in performance and strength, but in the case of dilucine, we're looking at a dipeptide here that should be better absorbed than the typical L-leucine you find in protein, amino acid products like BCAs or essential amino acids. And it was a head-to-head -head dosage, meaning two grams of both compared. We have a full breakdown of the study on our blog if you want to read more into it. We also have a study with Chad Kirksick, who is one of the main researchers in this study. Chad Chad is very well known for his work with the International Society of Sports Nutrition, as well as many other great studies that we've covered over the years. I'd love to know from you, though. Have you used dilucine? Are you looking to use more of it because of the study? And have your thoughts on it changed now that there is a more robust amount of data to support it?